In this example, we're going to follow a similar process for selecting materials, and this time we're going to be selecting the material for a brake disc on a car. So if we consider some of the properties first of all that we would like this brake disc to have, the first property that comes to mind is hardness. We want this to have high hardness. And if you recall, hardness was resistance to scratching and indentation. If the surface of our brake disc becomes scratched or indented on here, then obviously it's going to affect the braking performance. The other thing that we want this disc to have is wear resistance, so high wear resistance. And wear resistance will determine how much material is lost over time on this brake disc. We're going to look at a chart that evaluates this in terms of how much material is lost during a process. Now some other properties that we might like this to have, we might want it to be stiff, so high stiffness. And the material property that relates to stiffness and rigidity is elastic modulus. Materials with a high elastic modulus are inelastic, meaning they're stiff, and materials with a low elastic modulus have high elasticity. It's a little counterintuitive, but high elastic modulus means low elasticity. And high elastic modulus means high stiffness, which is the inverse of elasticity. Now the final property that we're going to consider is thermal expansion. We're going to want low thermal expansion. Now the reason for this is because as this brake disc becomes hot, the last thing we want is for it to expand, because if it expands, it may decrease the distance between our brake pads. If the distance between the brake pads changes, we may find that the brake disc, pictured here in white, would actually rub against the brake pad, pictured here in grey. So ideally we want a low coefficient of thermal expansion to prevent this from happening when the brake disc becomes hot. So first of all, let's look at hardness and wear resistance. And once again, the chart that we're going to use was created using the CES EduPack 2018, provided by Granta Design Limited. And here's the image of the chart that we're going to use. So first of all, if we look at our two axes, on the y-axis, we have wear rate. And this wear rate is a measure of how much material is lost during a given process under an applied stress. So we have two surfaces being pushed together with a particular stress, and as a result of movement between those surfaces, we're going to lose material. So this information will have been obtained through extensive testing. On the other axis, we have our hardness, and the hardness of the material is its resistance to scratching and indentation. Now once again, if we look at our scales, these are logarithmic scales, so we see on our x-axis, we go from 10 to 100 to 1000, it's not a linear scale. And on our wear rate, we have materials which wear readily, with wear rate constants of 10 to the minus 4, and we see that number decreasing. So essentially, we want the materials with the lower wear rate, the materials that are less likely to wear. So we're looking for high hardness, low wear rate. Well, high hardness is going to be on the right-hand side of our x-axis, and low wear rate is going to be near the bottom of our y-axis. As you would expect, the harder the material, the less readily it's likely to wear. Now we're going to consider two different materials during this analysis. One of the materials we're going to consider is cast iron, and the other material that we're going to consider is silicon carbide. Both of these materials are commonly used in brake discs. Cast irons tend to be used in standard vehicles, whereas silicon carbide tends to be used in performance vehicles. So we're going to analyze each of those. Now what we notice about each of those materials is they're very well matched in terms of wear rate. They're both sitting at around 10 to the minus nine on that axis. Where these two materials differ is in terms of hardness and we see cast irons sitting at a hardness of around 2000. But if we look at our silicon carbide then, we have hardnesses of around 30,000. Because we have that logarithmic scale, that small distance represents a large difference in terms of hardness. So 2000 for cast irons, whereas silicon carbide, somewhere in the order of 30,000 megapascals for the hardness.
So comparable in terms of wear resistance, but silicon carbide appearing to be better for hardness. So we're shortlisting silicon carbide and we're shortlisting cast iron. And we found that silicon carbide has better hardness, but we found that their wear resistance is comparable. So at the moment we have one positive for silicon carbide and a positive for both silicon and cast iron in terms of their wear resistance. Let's look at stiffness and thermal expansion next. So once again, we have a chart from materials.eng.cam.ac.uk. And again, I'm going to provide links under these images on the study platform. We need to look at two materials. We need to look at the ceramic material, silicon carbide, and we need to look at the metal cast iron. So let's highlight our metals group first of all. And we can see here the cast iron has a stiffness or a Young's modulus between 100 and 200 gigapascals. So 100 gigapascals here and 200 gigapascals here. Recall that the stiffer material has the highest elastic modulus and the more flexible or more elastic material would have the lower elastic modulus. Now let's look at our ceramics then. And for our ceramics group, we see silicon carbide here. And this time silicon carbide has an elastic modulus somewhere in the order of 400 gigapascals. So once again, in terms of stiffness, the silicon carbide outperforms the cast iron. We have one last property to look at, thermal expansion. And once again, we have a chart that's been produced using the Granta CES Edu Pack, this time the 2017 version. And the axis that we're interested in this time is our Y axis for thermal expansion. We need to consider two materials. We need to consider cast iron. And whilst cast iron isn't on here, we would expect the thermal expansion of cast iron to be very similar to high carbon steels. Cast iron, in effect, is a carbon steel with a percentage carbon above 2%. The other material that we're considering is silicon carbide, here, in the technical ceramics section. Now recall that we're looking for a material with a low thermal expansion. We don't want the brake disc to expand upon heating. So we have cast iron with a coefficient of thermal expansion of around 10, whereas our silicon carbide has a coefficient of thermal expansion of around four. So once again, the silicon carbide far outperforms the cast iron. So let's summarize. We've already established that silicon carbide is the harder of the two materials, but that silicon carbide and cast iron are relatively similar in terms of their wear resistance. We've since established that the stiffer of the two materials is silicon carbide by quite a considerable degree, and we've also established that the thermal expansion of silicon carbide is significantly lower than cast iron. So based on all of those judgments, it appears that silicon carbide would be the better material for the brake disc than cast iron. Now this brings us on to the question, why is it that the majority of brake discs are manufactured from cast iron rather than silicon carbide? And the simple answer is cost. In a later tutorial, we're going to look at manufacturing processes, but the cost of producing a silicon carbide disc is going to be considerably greater than the cost of producing a cast iron disc.